Hello and welcome to the 25th video in this series of programming videos on C. So, what we're going to discuss in the next couple of videos is bitwise operations in C because it's really important in a lot of programs and particularly programs where you're dealing with uh, say machine interfaces such as your Arduino board or something like this. Now I've got here in the spreadsheet a very the start of a very quick explanation of how binary numbering works. If you're not at all familiar with binary, then I suggest you go and have a look on Google, type it in, binary numbering, and try and get the gist of exactly how it's working, otherwise this isn't going to be making much sense, but I'm going to do a very, very quick explanation of it. If we have the decimal number 4, this is represented in binary using, I'm going to use 4 bits and no more in this case, by 0, 1, 0, 0. And the way binary works is, starting from what's called the least significant bit on the right hand side as we look at look at it this bit is worth 1 the next bit the second bit is worth 2 the third bit worth 4 the fourth bit worth 8 if i was writing out a six, uh, fifth bit this would be worth 16 and so on in ascending powers of 2 so 4 is the decimal 4 as we look at it is represented in binary as 0 1 0 0 that should be fairly self-explanatory. If I wanted to represent 12, I would have a 1, 1, 0, 0, because 8 plus 4 gives 12. If I wanted to do 13, I would have a 1, a 1, a 0, and a 1, because 8 plus 4 plus 1 is 13. So hopefully that's a fairly explanatory, self-explanatory representation of how binary numbering works. So when we're using bit operations in C, we won't be really interested in what the actual value of the numbers are in the decimal. We're more interested in what bits are 1 and what bits in the number are 0. So let's take our first operator called the bitwise AND. And let's take, let's for argument's sake say we have a number for 1, 0, 1 and 0. And we'll call this number A and we'll call number B 0, 0, 1, 0. Now the bitwise AND, so that worked well, bitwise AND is represented by the ampersand symbol in this way. We'll be having a look at some code shortly. So if I do A AND B in this way, the result I get is a 0, a 0, a 1 and a 0. And the way the bitwise AND works is to say, when comparing two numbers, it matches the bits side by side, and where two bits, in this case the second bit, in the same position, are both 1, then the result of ANDing the two together at that bit is a 1. Otherwise, it's a 0. The next operator type that we've got that I want to discuss in this video is something called the bitwise OR. The bitwise OR is represented by the pipe, which took a while to find on a Mac keyboard running Windows, in this way. And if you do an OR, then the result is if either OR, A, the first or the second number, so in this case A or B, the bit is a 1, then the result also has a 1. So A or B would be 1, 0, 1, 0 in that fashion. So I hope that's fairly self-explanatory of the way these operators work. Now we can have a quick look at a little bit of some code. And I've tried to relate this slightly to where, the way somebody might do it in an application. So here I have something called, a number called status of machine. And it has a decimal value of 13, which we know from binary is a 1101. Now, I did about a year and a half ago a project for a company in the factory where we were making a software to interface with a machine which already had a PLC built into it. And this machine had a load of different memory slots, each represented by 16-bit numbers, not 4-bit as we're using in these examples. And each of the bits in these numbers represented a position on or off of a certain switch or sensor on the machine. So what you could imagine here is, is that these four bits here 1101 are actually switches and let's call them switches A, B, C and D. So the leftmost bit here that's worth 8 is switch A 
and the bit worth 1 is switch D. So I'm going to call switch B, it's got a value of 4, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, and switch C has a value of 2, which is 0, 0, 1, 0. And what we can do now is use bitwise operations to actually say, is switch B on? And the way to do this is very simple. I just say is if status of machine bitwise and with check for switch B. So this is the full status of the machine. In the status of the machine, switch A is on, switch B is on, switch C isn't on, and switch D is on. I suppose I could make an extra comment on the top here just to... So we have switch A, switch B, switch C, switch D in this way. So if state of machine bitwise anded with switch B is not equal to naught, then print F switch B is on. Simple as that. Else and I'll just copy this to be a little bit quicker. Print F switch B is not on. So if I save this now and then go and compile and run, you can see that we get the printout that switch B is in fact on. Now if I turn switch B off by making this bit here a zero, the number would now be have the value of nine because it's one zero zero one. And save this and now recompile and run the program you can now see that we've got switch B is not on. So now let's have a look at switch C in the same way. If I now do a check for switch C, and save and compile and run the program, it also says switch C is not on because the current status is 1001, and you can see that switch C is in the third position, which in our status is a zero. If I then change the status, let's say to zero, one, one, zero, so that it actually has a value of six, and save and now run, both switches should be read as in the on position. Switch B is on and switch C is on. So you can get a very good idea there already of how you start applying bitwise operators, uh, operation, uh, oh, bitwise operators, sorry, to practical applications in a C program. And like I said, I've most commonly been used it, apart from in the chess pro program, when doing interfaces for machine applications in production environments. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll continue the discussion by having a little bit of a look at the OR operator. Thanks for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube. And also, now that I've had some rather nice comments on YouTube about the videos, if you have any particular queries or any homework or any puzzles that you've been set to do in C or anything like this that you'd like demonstrating on the videos then please say and I'll see if I can get around to doing it. Thanks very much till next time.